Thank you. Thank you so much. I'd like to uh, introduce you to a strange paradox. Life, we all know, is, uh, of course, completely unpredictable, and it's constantly changing, and the way we navigate through life is simply by improvising, because we don't have any other choice. So arguably, improvisation could be said to be the single most important skill that we'll ever acquire in life. So here comes the paradox. Uh, why are we not being taught uh, improvisation in schools? Why are we not being taught improvisation by our parents as we're brought up? Why uh, are we just left to become uh, self-taught improvisers with sporadic experience and randomly acquired skills? Now imagine if you could switch from being a unaware self-taught improviser to becoming a conscious expert improviser, what would happen? I believe, of course, that what would happen is that you would become much better at interacting with the world and at uh, navigating through life. So uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit about myself. I'm basically a uh, professional improviser because I'm a jazz pianist, and uh, jazz is an improvised art form. And uh, in jazz, I would say about 98% of uh, all the notes that you'll hear are purely improvised. They're made up on the spot. And the way we do this as jazz artists is that we have some very uh, specific and very powerful principles, tools, and techniques that we use. And uh, they have been developed over multiple generations of uh, great masters of uh, improvised music, and they've been passed down to people like myself who use them today. And uh, my thesis is that you can take these improvisation principles, tools, and techniques and apply them to any improvisational context outside the realm of music. And this, of course, includes life itself. Um, now, the best way to begin to understand what jazz is and why you can apply its uh, principles elsewhere is to first become aware of the fact that music is a language. It's not a story in itself, it's a language. So when you um, hear a piece of music, you uh, are basically hearing a story being told uh, with a language that we call music. And this particular language has uh, its own version of uh, all the exact same components and elements as uh, any other language has, including vocabulary, grammar, diction, uh, so on and so forth. So when you have a group of uh, jazz musicians on a concert hall stage performing a collective improvised uh, piece of music, it's really the exact same process as when you have a group of people gathered for a spontaneous collective uh, uh, discussion. Uh, for example, a round table discussion or a panel discussion. You know, those types of uh, situations are basically um, verbal jam sessions. Um, so every conversation is really a form of jazz. Uh, now, what's improvisation? Well, improvisation is mainly two things. It's the ability to adapt to change and uh, the ability to be uh, creative on demand. And those are two very valuable uh, attributes, I would say. And, uh, you know, I believe that if we can transfer expert knowledge on these matters from the realm of music to the realm outside of music, then we really have something substantial. Um, so let's take a look at what improvisation really is. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, I call this the uh, wrong note example. Uh, in jazz, we, um, we don't believe in uh, wrong notes or mistakes. They simply don't exist, because whenever a quote-unquote wrong note occurs, we have ways to convert that note into a correct note. And the way we do it is that uh, uh, immediately following the occurrence of the uh, wrong note, we improvise a group of notes that 
all together will form a musical phrase that integrates and includes the previously occurred wrong note and gives it a new role in this new context and retroactively turns this uh, wrong note into not only a correct note, but an essential note. So let me show you uh, uh, on the piano how this works. Uh, I'm now going to play a uh, chord in, in my uh, left hand. It sounds like this. And in the context of this chord, I'm now going to play a wrong note with my right hand. I think most people will agree this sounds wrong. Um, see, let me do it again. You know, if I, if, if I started my concerts like this, you know, I think uh, some people would get up and leave, you know. So I, I have to uh, turn this note into a correct note. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do now. So uh, I'm, I'm going to do what I told you a moment ago. I'm going to improvise a group of notes immediately following this wrong note. Uh, that's going to give it a new meaning. So, so here we go. So in this phrase that I just played, I actually played this wrong note twice, and it no longer sounds wrong. Let me play it again. So I'm giving the note a new meaning. So, so basically, the, the principle is that you should welcome any seemingly unwanted element, because you can always convert it into an in essential component in a newly created context. So uh, let me give you a parallel example from, uh, from real life. Uh, years ago, I was uh, living in New York, and I was living in an apartment building uh, in Manhattan on the 32nd floor. And one day, all the elevators in my building broke, and they remained broken for a very long time. Um, so during this period, the only way to get to my apartment was to take the stairs. And um, I don't know if any of you have ever climbed uh, 32 flights of stairs, but that's a lot of stairs, believe me. Um, but as an improviser, you know, I don't stop to agonize over the occurrence of such wrong notes. I immediately start to look for the notes that I'm going to use to create the melody that's going to turn the wrong note, in this case, the broken elevators, into a correct note. So here are the notes that I found. Uh, the first one I found was uh, as I walked up the stairs and reached my destination on the 32nd floor, I realized that uh, every time I reached the 32nd floor, I had an enormous uh, sense, feeling of uh, accomplishment, like a, like a physical sensation. Uh, and it basically translated into a huge boost in self-confidence across the board in anything I was doing. So it became a very valuable element in my life at that time to, to, to have this feeling every day. Um, the next note I found was the fact that uh, the workout I was getting from walking up and down these stairs was actually far more efficient than the workout I was getting at the very expensive health club that I was a member of. <laughs> so I decided to resign my membership of the health club, and as a result, I saved money and got a better workout. <laughs> and then. The next thing I, I, that happened was that I realized, hey, I have an in-house gym in my apartment building now, and it's open 24 hours a day. How cool is that? And, uh, you know, so I, I was saving transportation time to and from the gym, and then I also didn't have to go out and in the rain uh, to just to work out on rainy days. So all in all, this became like a really nice melody that... Uh, included uh, the previously wrong note of broken elevators, which now had become a essential note in this new context. So the most uh, important advice to keep in mind when using this principle is to uh, remember to always look forward, never look back. And that's the most common mistake that people do when a wrong note occurs in their life, because, you know, most people, when a wrong note occurs, they'll turn around and contemplate the wrong note for a while and agonize over it. And when they do that, they'll never see the notes that are available in front of them to handpick and create a melody that will turn this wrong note into a correct note. 
And the notes that you need to do that are always located in front of you in the chronological timeline. They're never located behind you. So always look forward, never look back. That's very important. Now here's another example. Um, I call this the Michelangelo example because uh, when Michelangelo created his very famous uh, marble masterpiece called the Statue of David, um, he was asked how in the world was he able to accomplish such a magnificent uh, work of art. And his answer was very interesting. It uh, was something like this. He said, uh, oh, it was easy. David was already inside the block of marble. All I had to do was remove the excess marble and set David free. So, you know, in music, the equivalent would be uh, something, for example, like this. I'm now going to play a whole bunch of notes. I'm going to use my arms so I can play more than 10 notes. I only have 10 fingers. So let's say that this is my block of marble. Um, in this block of marble, I already now see multiple Davids in the form of uh, melodies. And I'm now going to uh, uh, remove the excess notes uh, to reveal one of these melodies for you. So, uh, so I'm, I'm removing the excess notes and I'm leaving just these behind that I want you to hear and they sound like this. Now this may not sound like much uh, still to most of you, but uh, it, if I play these notes one by one in chronological descending order, they sound like this. And again, so all, all of a sudden we have a beautiful, elegant melody, which all along was embedded in this. So uh, let me give you an example from, uh, a parallel example from real life. I used to spend a whole lot of time in Paris and uh, years ago on a bright summer day, I uh, took a stroll alongside the Seine River with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, as we were strolling up and down the Seine River, all of a sudden we came across this beautiful, secluded, public green space uh, alongside the water. And so we had to stop and admire it for a while. And while we were standing there, my girlfriend, um, she s suddenly saw something more she saw the ultimate venue for the most fabulous Parisian outdoor summer party ever. And as she shared this idea with me, we both got very, very excited about it. So we rushed home and sent out invitations to all of our Paris friends. And uh, uh, we asked them to show up at this location at 7 p.m. two days later and bringing each a bottle of champagne. And needless to say, we had the most amazing, most memorable uh, summer party that I can think of. So um, the essential principle here is uh, that you can always create something out of anything. And um, uh, the way to uh, tune into this uh, way of thinking is um, similar to the difference uh, between having your eyes closed and having your eyes open. You know, if you have your eyes closed, uh, you don't see anything. But as soon as you open your eyes, you see a bunch of things out there. You didn't put those things out there. They're just out there, and you can see them because you open your eyes. Now, if you use that as a metaphor uh, in the context of the uh, Michelangelo principle, uh, opening your eyes, uh, in this case, is connecting for real with the idea that you can create something out of anything. And the way you connect with the idea is by turning it into a knowing, which means not a belief, but a knowing. And the way that you do this is by uh, doing it enough times that you begin to realize that it's a fact. You can actually create something out of anything. And once you integrate this knowing, it'll feel like opening your eyes and all of a sudden you can see endless possibilities in anything you come across.
basically. So, uh, as I'm sure you've uh, concluded by now, I'm uh, basically uh, equating life with jazz. Uh, you know, I use the exact same improvisation principles to navigate through life as I do to navigate through any music performance. So, uh, to round things off, I'd like to uh, uh, give you a uh, final uh, principle that's uh, a general one and perhaps, uh, perhaps the most important one. I would like for you to start looking at your life, at your improvised life, in the same way as jazz musicians look at their improvised music. And jazz musicians look at their improvised music as works of art. And if you start to look at your life as a, a work of art, then on one hand, you, become, you instantly become a conscious improviser because when you know that you're building a work of art, you right away become far more selective as to what elements and components you add to it along the way. And it will instantly make you make very different choices sometimes and far better choices in life. So you can basically view the entire world as one gigantic stage on which the ultimate improvisation, which is life itself, takes place. And on this stage, you are a performing improviser, just like the, a jazz musician is a performing musician on the stage in a jazz performance. So you are a performing improviser on this gigantic stage. And therefore, your life is a work of art. And you have the potential to turn it into a masterpiece. Thank you. <laughs>